Hi everyone, I'm Aliana de la Guardia, she, her pronouns, and I'm the artistic director of Guerrilla Opera. What I would like to do today is to talk to you a little bit about our Guerrilla Labs. Our Guerrilla Labs are made as a vital space where our participants can explore their own unique art making, but in a peer learning environment. It's a place where not only you learn, but also you share, and you learn by doing. Our Guerrilla Labs, Our 2021 Guerrilla Labs, we've expanded from last year. We only really had one and then we had another little course. But this year we have four and they are each equally as intensive. Some are three classes, some are four classes, some are six. And they expand into different forms of artistry, but that I think are really related. We're going to start with our artistic projects and then our teaching artistry and then our shadow theater. And I will finish up with our libretto writing. But these are three, four, six week courses that take you in a peer learning environment through different processes of creating your own unique way of doing things. The Artistic Projects Lab, I'm the one leading this one. And this is one where once you have your project and you're well on your way on developing it, what do you do after that? How does it get produced? What are all the things that you need besides gathering the usual suspects and getting it up on its feet? We're going to talk about your organizational tools. We're going to talk about how you package it, how you might even start considering a budget, what you might need when you're approaching other collaborators or producers or um, presenters that are potentially looking for projects to develop or looking for new collaborators to embark on new things. In my lab is um, also going to be guest speaker Ishan Johnson and Ishan is a wonderful, wonderful human being. We've known each other since we were 17 years old, went to undergrad together and he has since become this development expert working with um, big companies and is now the Associate Director of Philanthropy at the um, Art Institute of Chicago. And um, every time I talk to him, he's always mentioning this incredible concept of community-centered fundraising, community-centered fundraising. And we've experienced community as never before during this pandemic, right? I think that this um, concept of community-centered fundraising is really applicable to artists and what we're trying to do and what we try to do around our work. We're trying to sell, tell our stories. We're trying to engage our communities directly. And I think what he has to say about this is going to help us all learn a little bit more about a holistic form of fundraising. In this project lab, you're going to learn about press and pitch kits and what's the difference. You're going to learn about your budgets and your fundraising. So you're going to start with how much might it cost for your project to go up and then how to develop your fundraising around that. This is not necessarily to say that you're going to produce your project yourself necessarily, but you do need to have a sense of what it's going to cost for someone else to produce it. And also, it's important to note that some people want to come in at the beginning of the project. Some people want to come in in the middle. Some people want to come in at the end. Most often, you're going to find some people who want to come in in the middle and the end, or you're going to find some people who they don't have money for your project, but they have a venue and then you have to fundraise and pay all the artists yourself and come up with the scenic design and come up all, with all of the money to produce all of that. How do you start? Where does the seed money come from? Who are you asking? How are you asking? Right? And then from there, you're going to need a timeline. You're going to need a plan, whether or not it's a, whether it's an artistic plan or whether it's a development plan, you're going to need to have both of those linked up in your brain to um, start to engage your project with the community. These are the dates and the times. It's four 
weeks, two weeks in June and two weeks in July. They're two hour sessions because we're going to be going over all the tools and we're going to be having discussions. So we're going to be talking back and forth. And this is not necessarily a lab where it's like me telling you what's what and how to do everything. It's really going to be a conversation because maybe you might come in with some knowledge already that I didn't know, or maybe you had talked to someone previously and you have a little anecdote or you have, you know, something to add to the conversation. I think that's important. And then on top of the two week hour, hour sessions, you get an additional 45 minute consult with me. And this is to talk about anything you want to talk about. It can be where you are in the project. What's your next steps? Um, asking me questions. You know, sometimes I know people so I can hook you up with someone who knows better than me. And if there's something that I've learned about this environment, about this community, is that we are all really trying to support each other, trying to uplift each other, trying to reach out to each other. And there is always going to be someone who is going to respond to you. And if I can't do it myself, I'm going to hook you up with somebody that can do that. Look at these deadlines. The deadline to apply is May 30th and your notification is June 6th. So it seems like far away, but actually really it's not far away. So um, check us out online, click the uh, apply button and just go through. You don't have to pay it up, up front. And you can request in your application subsidy if you need it. Um, but just make sure to send the application and then always send us um, an email or something if you, if you have any questions because we will answer them for you. <laughs> Our next lab is teaching artistry and that one is run by Gwena Fairchild Taylor. And um, she comes to us highly recommended by Opera Omaha does a lot of really wonderful work in, in her community in Canada and with indigenous communities in Canada. And she has a really beautiful, holistic point of view of um, how to create curriculum and how to have it come from who you are as an artist. And some of our, some of the courses are a little bit singer centric, but that that really just means that they're artist centric. So even if you're not a classical singer, you can learn how to engage your community with your art making and get them making art themselves. This is one way that Guerrilla Opera does this. We have a really robust program for audiences that are visually impaired and we really like to interact and to get them um, in, in environments that are tactile where they can touch things and feel things and try things and make noise and um, this is one presentation that we did at the national braille press and here's another one a tactile event that we did before um, a show where the audience are feeling puppets these were shadow puppets and obviously they can't see the shadows but they can handle the puppets and get the shape of them this is just an example of our art making um, one of the, her art making is far more expansive. She is really an expert and um, is not just going to take you through tactics, but she's going to take you through curriculum planning, like how to start building these plans on how to engage with your community, which I think is really, really beautiful. These are on Tuesdays. There's three of them. Um, each of them are going to be videoed, so if you miss one, that's okay. Um, you're going to get the video of it, and then um, make sure that you apply by the deadline. And these are the same deadlines as previous. And again, please send us an email or contact us online or DM us or PM us. We're, we'll answer any questions, and those are 90-minute workshops. Shadows in Music. This one I'm really excited about because, you know, for me as a physical actor, I have always been, I, I have for the past um, 10 or more years been studying physical forms of theater, which embody different kinds of performance that are in cultures all over the world. And what draws me to shadow theater is that it is a form of theater that is shared through cultures all over the world. And each one does it in a really different way. Shadow theater for me is extraordinarily transportative. 
it's haunting, it's beautiful. And as a person who runs a small company, it's a way to do something that looks like a million bucks on a small budget. And Denise's work is colorful, whimsical, and so creative. These are just some ways Guerrilla Opera has used shadow theater. Someone's showing up there. This one is a little bit more abstract from our piece, from our um, piece called Papillon. It's also from Papillon, where you can see me actually performing behind behind the screen. And there's another one from Conan Hot Anthologist. This one used shadow theater in a lot of different ways. So as you can see, it's a way to create different spaces on the stage. It's a way to transport your characters without having to completely re-envision the entire stage. You can, you can have one thing happening in front of the screen and another thing happening behind the screen. This is Brian doing a, a puppet show kind of in front of the screen where you're both seeing the puppeteer and the puppet. Here's an example of in front of the screen and behind the screen, also from Conan Hot Anthologous, where one of our characters meets a deity, a small fairy. I attended one of Denise's programs and I thought it was really incredible how she was able to generate such beautiful creative work in one 45 minute session. And um, this one says two hours, but that's that's not correct. It's actually um, it's for ninety minute sessions, and this is the same. These are the same deadlines as before. These are two Thursday night um, performances, and a fun little thing is that Denise was going to be zooming in from Tehran to be teaching these classes, and uh, Gwena, who's teaching our uh, teaching artist course is zooming in from Canada to teach these classes. So this is an international thing. And the, what was important um, to me about this is that to really get outside of our immediate community and to learn what other people are doing around the country so that we can be better informed what we're doing in our own communities. And finally, we have our libretto writing course. This one is with Javonde Jones. I have absolutely loved every conversation I've had with this person. And, you know, like when, when we've Zoomed together, it's like we're just speaking the same language. I absolutely love everything he says. He has really interesting ideas that come from traditional and classical um, lyric theater and also opera but also more expansive forms of storytelling that come from cultures all over the world. Um, he teaches courses on, you know, dismantling this Western classical traditions, which I think is so important in opera. And I think it's so important in the way we craft stories for opera that uh, I think he has such an important point of view that's um, that I wanted to bring into our company so that we can also learn from him. In this class, you're actually going to get tools. Again, these classes are not show and tell. You're actually doing things. You're creating things. So you're going to have an outline for a new work. He's going to help you come up with ideas. If you don't really have an idea or you don't have a fully formed one, that's okay. You can come in here and we help you. We give you tools. You'll get text for one opera. You'll have text for at least a duet and an ensemble. You're going to do character development work in within your stories. You're going to meet guerrilla operas, composers, and librettists because you're also going to be exploring our works that we've generated, and you're going to have access to our full video archive. And the deadline for this is a little bit later. So the dates and the times for this, there's two cohorts. There's a Wednesday, Wednesday cohort and a Saturday cohort. Each of these are six, six weekly classes, two hour online sessions. So you're gonna be really generating work here. 
The deadline is June 6th. It's a week later than the other one because this starts later and then you're going to be notified a little bit later as well. So you have a little bit more time with this one, but again, don't wait. This is a popular course. So you want to get in early. And again, you can sign up online and request subsidies in the application if you really need it. We do offer subsidies to artists who need them if you request them. So make sure, don't wait, don't sit with questions in your head, request the subsidies when you need them. And then you can go on guerrillaopera.org forward slash education for more information. You can follow us online because we are posting like crazy and you can follow us at Guerrilla Opera on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. And we even have a LinkedIn page. I have loved generating these classes and thoroughly enjoyed speaking with each of these teaching artists. Denise, I've known, but Gwena, I've just met, and she has really important ideas that I want represented in this company and that I want out in the world. These teaching artists that I bring that I bring in are not just people that can lead you, but they're people that can lead me. And that's what this really um represents. These guerrilla labs are an exchange. There are ways we can exchange ideas. There are ways we can interact with each other. And there are ways where we can make our art forms better. You know, in these guerrilla labs, our teaching artists are predominantly BIPOC and they're predominantly women identifying. We create a really inclusive environment where you can tell your stories in a really authentic way. Guerrilla Opera really represents creative authenticity. We want our artists telling their stories. When we engage a composer, we ask them, what story do you want to tell? And this is because Artist-centric work is really important to us. We've been around for 15 seasons, and if you include the works we have in development, we have over 40 new works from over 30 composers. We have over 100 performances in 15 seasons. That is a long-term contribution to this art form. You can find this on our uh, website, forward slash about, and read a little bit more about this company, but we want you with us. We want you to be interacting with us. We don't just want you to learn from us. We want you, we want to learn from you. So please, if you have any questions, contact us and um, ask them. PM us on, on social media. Um, we're really here to share what we know so we want you to join us for these. And uh, I hope to see your application soon. And I hope to meet you at our uh, educational events.